Hey guys, it's Alex and I am here with my second month of top 5 videos. Y'all seemed to like them last month so I decided to keep on going and today I'm going to do my top 5 favorite movie adaptations. The first book on this list I actually don't have anymore, I unhauled it fairly recently. It is a movie that I absolutely adore and it's the only movie on this list that I actually prefer to the book and that is The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot. I read this book and this most of the series when I was in middle school and high school and I really enjoyed them at the time. But as I went on and as I got older and the books kept coming out, I found that I was less and less interested in the series. They didn't hold up as well when I was maturing and getting older. I would still highly recommend them to younger teens, middle school, early high school, but for me they're not a series that held up to adulthood. However, the movie based on these books also called The Princess Diaries, is absolutely amazing. It's utterly iconic. It changes the story in such a way that it's pretty much no longer the same story, but I included it on this list anyways. The movie makes everything about the books that much more charming. It's that much more enjoyable. The characters are much more likable than they were in the books. In the books I disliked pretty much everyone regardless of their role. Some of them you were supposed to hate and some of them not so much, but I couldn't really relate to any of them. The movie is just iconic. It's funny. It's cheesy but in the best most fun way and it's a movie that I still quote to this day and I know so many people who do. All of my friends still love this movie. We all saw it in the early 2000s when it came out, but it's one that I will continue to watch and would highly recommend. Maybe not to people who love the books exactly as they are, but to anyone who likes those cheesy early 2000s romantic comedies. It's just such a fun time. The second book I have on this list is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This is one of my favorite books of all time and it's one where I did see the movie first but when I read the book it quickly became a new favorite and I do prefer the book to the movie, but that's because they're two different things. This is one where William Goldman wrote both the book and the screenplay for the movie. Even though changes are made, obviously, because it's a different medium, it keeps the same charm and the same general feeling of the book. The movie is so iconic, so quotable. I don't know many people who actually read the book before they saw the movie because the movie is very marketed towards children. Which is not to say that it's not also an adult movie that adults thoroughly love as well, because that's a movie that holds up through all the cheese and all the 80s special effects. It's just a wonderful, wonderful movie for children, for adults, for literally anyone. The book very much is more of an adult book, not because there are mature subjects or sex or anything like that. Just because of the tone, it's a lot more sarcastic dry humor that isn't quite as accessible to a younger audience, but this is one that I think is absolutely hilarious and the movie is just as good. The third book I have on this list is Room by Emma Donahue. This is a book about a woman who was kidnapped as a teenager and held in captivity for seven years and she eventually has a son in captivity, and the book is narrated by her son who's five years old at the time. I really enjoy this book. It's not a favorite, but it is one I've read multiple times, and the movie for it is absolutely beautiful. One of the reasons I do enjoy the movie so much is because it sticks very closely to the plot and doesn't add anything new. A lot of movies sort of fall into the trap where you have to remove things from the story to make it into a movie because there's simply not enough time to go through a full, you know, 300-400 page book in the span of two hours. That's just not realistic. So they remove things, but then they also have the bad habit of adding things back in that weren't in the books and that can be a detriment to the plot. And I think this movie does a really great job of subtracting things that you do miss but they manage to keep in everything important and don't really change the story too much at all. It's just a bit of a shorter story. And the other reason I do really enjoy the movie is because the story in this and the character development is so wonderful, but it's kind of a struggle to get through with the narrator being a five-year-old child. Just because they are a five-year-old and they talk and think like a five-year-old, 
and it can get quite irritating. And even though the movie is sort of told from the point of view of Jack the child, it's a movie so it's much easier to not get irritated by his narration. And it's a lot easier to get through and just as heartbreaking, although I would obviously recommend picking up the book first and then going to see the movie. The fourth book I have on this list is Speak by Laurie House Anderson. I don't know of many people who haven't read this book or seen this movie, but for those of you who haven't, this is a YA novel about a girl who was raped at a party, and it follows her in the months and the year after as she enters her freshman year of high school. This book is beautiful, it's stunning, it's so heartbreaking, and one of my favorite YA books. And the movie is just as heartbreaking. It stars Kristen Stewart, and she does such a wonderful job. I cry at the movie, I cry at the book. It's so amazingly wonderful, and I can't recommend both of them enough. And finally, the last book on this list is, of course, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't know what this list would be without including a Harry Potter movie. And I picked the first one because the first one sticks so closely with the books and is just so beautifully done and so well cast and charming and I can't watch this movie enough. I love this movie. I love this book and it is the best time possible. I don't know of anyone who hasn't either read the books or seen the movie, but I would highly recommend both. It's a children's classic. And I think of all the movies, the first one does such a good job of sticking with the books and not changing the story because this was not a story that needed to be changed in the slightest. So those were my five favorite book to movie adaptations. I really enjoy all five of those and there were several more that just didn't quite make this list but I do love as well. Please let me know down below if you've seen any of these and what your favorite book to movie adaptations are. I do really love to see good ones because there's nothing better than seeing a movie that just captures a beautiful story so well.